Hey everyone, today I have another drugstore makeup review for you. I have some brand new products from Wet n Wild that I found at my local Walgreens over the weekend. I haven't seen these in any other drugstores yet, so they could be a Walgreens exclusive. And I wanna say everything in this video is under $10, so it's all really affordable stuff as well. And this isn't just a first impression because I tried most of these products yesterday. And as we go through each one, I'll kind of give you my thoughts and first impressions from yesterday. And then we'll also be doing a wear test today and we'll see if anything changes. So just quickly, if you are a fan of drugstore makeup, be sure to hit the subscribe button because I do talk about drugstore a lot here on my channel with the occasional high-end makeup as well. And everything is completely unsponsored. So if that sounds good, be sure to subscribe and let's Let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so first up, I have two new primer sticks. We have the Cooling Hydra Depuffer for eye and face, and then the Impossible Primer Stick. So this is like the stick version of their other Impossible Primer. It's the silicone-free one, which to be honest, isn't my absolute favorite primer, but I really wanted to see if the stick version was any different. So let's just take a look at the cooling one first. So this is called, again, the Cooling Hydra Depuffer for eye and face. It has caffeine vitamin E, green tea oil, and hyaluronic acid. So it's really supposed to just depuff anywhere you put it. The caffeine definitely helps with that. And it does have a really nice cooling sensation. I haven't tried this one on my face yet. I didn't try it yesterday, um, but just putting it on my hand, I felt like it was really nice. So I don't really have a lot of puffiness under my eyes, so I'm not sure if we're gonna see any kind of a difference, but I figured I would just put it like under one eye and not the other, and we'll compare them and see if there's a change. So I'm just gonna go ahead Ahead and smooth this right under my eye. I'm not gonna put it all over my face because I definitely wanna use the Impossible Primer for that, but I figured if this could kind of wake up my eye area, that would be nice. I had a really bad night's sleep last night, so. I don't know if it's showing under my eyes, but it would be nice if I could kind of brighten things up a little bit. So, I mean, it feels really nice, actually. Very refreshing and cooling. I mean, I would use it just for that, even if it doesn't actually do anything. It just feels really good. Um, so I guess I'll just let that sit for a couple minutes and we'll take a look um, after we apply the other primer. So just quickly, this one is, again, the Impossible Primer Stick. It says the one silicone-free primer stick that does it all and it claims to mattify the skin, hydrate blur pores, prep the skin for longer lasting makeup and it also says that it's impossibly silicone free and when I was putting this on my hand yesterday, again I haven't tried this on my face either but when I put it on my hand I felt like the side where I put it looked a lot more blurred than the other side. So I'm hopeful that I'm gonna like this but I figured what we could do is just put this on one half of my face and not the other. That way we can tell the difference if my makeup looks different on top of the primer than it does without. So as I'm applying it, it definitely has a little bit of a putty-like feel and a slightly tacky feel as well. So I think makeup is probably gonna grip to this really nicely. It doesn't have that really slick feel that some primers do. It's definitely a little bit thicker. I mean, just first impression though, this does feel a little bit dry. I feel like as I'm bringing it across my face, it drags a little bit and I feel like it's kind of pulling at my skin, which I don't love. I felt like the cooling stick had a lot more just glide to it. Looking up close in the mirror though, I definitely notice a difference. The pores on my cheek right here are pretty much gone. And then over here, they're a lot more noticeable. Let me just zoom you guys in a little bit closer. Okay, so over here where I put the primer, it looks really smooth. And then over here, I see all my pores. It also definitely did mattify as well. So I think that also makes a difference in the texture that you can see. And then as far as the eye depuffing stick, I don't know that I really see any difference, but like I said, I didn't have puffiness under my eyes to begin with. I might have a little bit of darkness on both sides, but I don't know if that really did anything other than it felt really nice. So let's move on to foundation. They have a new skin tint and this is called the Bare Focus Niacinamide Skin Tint. It has 5% niacinamide. It also has hyaluronic acid, peony extract, and I have it in the shade Fair Neutral. It claims to give you skin loving benefits with makeup and a natural healthy looking finish with a radiant glow and it has lightweight buildable coverage. So this does have the little dropper style bottle and it reminds me a lot of 
of like the Maybelline skin tint and the L'Oreal one. It's way cheaper than either one of those. And one thing to note is that this doesn't have denatured alcohol, which those other two do. And I really wasn't a fan of those formulas because I felt like it looked really, really dry and kind of cracked and it settled into all the fine lines. So I know a lot of people really love the L'Oreal and Maybelline ones. Personally, I do not. So I'm really happy to see that this one doesn't have the alcohol in the formula. So just quickly, I did wear this yesterday and I wore it on bare skin because I wanted to try the primer today and see if there's a difference. So on bare skin, I felt like this looked really nice initially and I also applied it with a brush. So I'm using the Lottie London LF20 brush and this is a really nice affordable blending brush, by the way, for foundation. It's like a flat top very dense brush. I was actually surprised at two things with the skin tint. One is that it feels a little bit thicker than I was expecting. It has a creamier feel, almost like a lighter coverage foundation versus that serum-like feel of a skin tint. It's definitely not as thin as the L'Oreal one or the Maybelline one. The texture of it kind of reminds me a little bit of something like the Maybelline Fit Me foundation, if you've ever tried that. It has a really, really thin feel for a foundation, but it's not quite a serum. And I felt like the coverage was pretty good with a brush. I did have to go back over certain areas on my cheeks and kind of build it up a little bit. I did feel like it built up really nice so no complaints there and I did feel like it gave my skin a little bit of like a radiant glow but nothing too super glowy or dewy. The only issue that I had with this when I went to go take my makeup off at night I took a photo and I'll just show you that quickly. On my chin area it looked like it was breaking up a little bit. It kind of had separated and had a little bit of a speckled appearance where the product was kind of gathered and it just wasn't laying completely smoothly on my chin and also by the end of the night I kind of felt like I saw my forehead lines a little bit more than I did when I first applied it. So it may have settled a little bit in that area. So that's why I really wanted to try it again over a primer today and see if that helped the way that this wears. And I'm also gonna be applying it with a sponge versus a brush and just see if there's a difference that way. So this sponge, by the way, it's from ColourPop. This is so cute. It's a heart shape for Valentine's Day. And it starts out red when you run it under warm water, it turns into a light pink, but then as it cools off, it turns back red again. So it is a little damp still. It doesn't stay pink, which I thought it would until maybe it dried out, but it must just have to do with the warmth of the water. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this on the side with the primer first. In my experience, I feel like skin tints tend to look better on bare skin than over a primer. I just think they're kind of meant to be that way. They're a little bit more like a skincare type of product, but I don't know, it's hard to say, you know, every formula is a little bit different. And, um, oh, I also wanted to mention, does this have a fragrance? Yeah, a little bit. It's um, not like a perfumey type of scent or anything like that. I think it's just the scent of the product itself, but at least it doesn't smell like paint thinner, like the, um, Photo Focus foundation, that one is awful. This has just a little bit of a chemical scent, but I don't feel like it's strong compared to that one. So anyway, let's just go ahead and take a closer look and we'll see how the two sides compare. Okay, so the first thing that I'm noticing on my cheek area, if I look at the side with the primer, I think it looks a little bit smoother than it does on the side without the primer. I notice my pores a little bit more on that cheek. And on my chin as well, I think it looks a little bit makeup-y. It's settling into the fine lines above my upper lip and making those look a little bit more apparent. As far as my forehead goes, I think it looks okay on my forehead for now, but we may see it settling into those fine lines again by the end of the day. So that's why I'm gonna do a wear test today and we'll see what that looks like at that point. So yeah, also when it comes to a sponge versus the brush, I feel like it looks pretty much the same as it did yesterday. I don't think the sponge really thinned the product out at all, which is kind of rare because usually if you use a brush, you get a little more coverage than a sponge. I feel like it kind of looks the same. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to eyeshadow. And I have these new Color Icon Multi Sticks. I got them in four different shades. One of them is a glitter finish and the other three have a shimmer finish. So. These claim that you can use them all over the face on eyes, lips, and cheeks. Although I feel like the colors that they come in are best suited for eye use than anything else. And as I was swatching them, I felt like they were really, really smooth. A couple of the shades were a little bit more sheer, especially that glittery finish one. And yesterday I did use two of the shades. So I started out with the shade Brown Sugar 
and I put this one in my crease and kind of towards the outer corner. I just drew it on with the stick first and then I blended it with my Sigma E24 brush and I felt like it blended out really nicely. It gave me a lot of time to work with it. It didn't seem like it was gonna dry down right away and again, it wasn't stiff at all. So blending it out with a brush was just very, very easy and I was able to get a nice sheer result with it. Then I applied that glittery shade which is called Golden Rush Hour all over my lid and this one it's kind of an interesting golden greenish color. I thought it was really, really pretty. And even though this particular shade's a little bit more on the sheer side, I thought the end result looked really nice. So I was happy with it initially. But again, when I was heading to bed last night, I decided to just snap a quick photo and see what it was looking like. And unfortunately, the green shade had creased, which was really disappointing. I was hoping that these would be a little bit more longer lasting, like the Milani eyeshadow crayons are, because those don't crease on me. My only thought was that maybe this green shade creased because I put it on top of another cream color. So today I thought what I would do is put down a powder base first. I'll use some powder eyeshadows. I'm gonna be using the Always Naked palette from Wet n Wild. And then I'll put one of the creams just as my lid color and maybe the powder underneath will help them to last a little bit longer. So I'm gonna pick up this mid-tone brown right here and I'm using the Profusion ES1 brush. So I'm just gonna work this shade into my crease. Next, I'm just gonna pick up this deeper shade on the Profusion ES6 small pointed eyeshadow brush. So this reminds me a lot of that smaller um, Angie hot and flashy brush that I use from BK Beauty, the E504. This one is really, really similar to that and it's much more affordable. So I'm just gonna pack this darker shade on the outer corner. Once I get this shade in place, then I'll just switch back to the one that I use for my crease and just soften the edges of this one. All right, then for my lid, I wanna use the multi-stick in the shade Rosy Locks. So this one is probably my favorite shade that I swatched and I wanted to save this for the video today. So I'm just gonna start applying this from the inner corner and working back toward the center of my lid and I'm gonna overlap that darker shade just a little bit. One thing that I am noticing about these and I think I'm noticing it even more today than I did yesterday, knowing that it creases, um, these not only feel creamy, but they also have kind of a sticky feel. Other shadow sticks, like the ones from Milani, for example, that I mentioned before, those feel creamy, but they kind of dry right to a powder as soon as you apply them to your eye. And with this, it doesn't feel like it's gonna dry down anytime soon. Like it definitely has that tacky feeling. So I don't know that I have high hopes for this shade either, even though I'm putting it on top of powder, but I guess we'll just have to see what happens later tonight. But for now, like I said, just applying these, they definitely feel just like a little bit sticky. Otherwise, I do think the shade is really beautiful. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my lower lash line as well. And then moving on to mascara, I don't know if this one is new or not, um, but it's new to me. So I haven't tried this one yet and it's called So Defined. It's a volumizing and defining mascara and it claims to give extra volume without clumpiness, that it's a weightless 24 hour mascara that delivers super defined volume, length and lift that's easy to build and control. It's supposed to be smudge proof and flake proof and it has castor oil and vitamin E to soften and condition the lashes. So I did use this one yesterday and I felt like it was kind of mediocre for me. First of all, I felt like the brush was a little bit bigger and having hooded eyes, I usually prefer a wand that's a little bit smaller because I ended up getting this all over my lid twice. <laughs> so I had to clean that up twice, which was a little bit annoying. And also it's a curved brush versus a straight one. So I think that makes it even harder to not get it on my eyelids. I also felt like this was an incredibly wet formula. And even though it says it doesn't clump, I did feel like it was starting to get a little bit clumpy as I was building up the coats. And at the end of the day, I do think it gave me some length and some volume, but it wasn't like blowing me away either. I felt like my lashes just looked okay. And more importantly, at the end of the night, I just wanna quickly show you what my lashes looked like. So I did have big smudges underneath my eyes and I don't know if this is just a me thing, but mascaras, always smudge on me. There are very few that don't. And that's, I think, why I normally wear tubing formulas because those don't smudge at all. And there are a few other drugstore formulas like the Maybelline Sky High and the original L'Oreal Telescopic that don't smudge on me that are not tubing formulas, but most 
regular mascaras do. And I don't know if it's the hooded eyes. I don't know if it's my skincare underneath my eyes that's doing it. I'm really not sure. Or maybe these mascaras just are prone to smudging. I will say this one did go a pretty long time before it smudged. I looked in the mirror like around the six hour mark and it still looked fine. But then there was sort of a big gap between that and when I went to bed. And at that point it had smudged. So I'm not 100% sure when it started doing that, but I looked like a hot mess when I was going to bed. And I just feel like I can't trust a mascara, you know, if it's going to do that, I can't put it on and then go out somewhere without worrying, like, what do my under eyes look like, you know? So needless to say, I'm not going to be repurchasing this. And yeah, like I keep getting this clumpy area right here. I'm trying to comb it out, but it's just kind of glopping up in that inner corner. So it just kind of looks really clumpy over there. I don't know. This definitely isn't my favorite formula. I've been using the e.l.f. Lash Extender Tubing Formula and I absolutely love it. I think it gives me great length and definition and it's not clumpy and the tubing formula is easy to remove and it doesn't smudge. So I think I'm definitely just gonna go back to using that one after this. All right, so moving on to blush, there are three new ones that I wanted to share with you. Two of them are not a new formula, which are the ones that I tried yesterday. I just did some demos so that you could see what they look like on my cheeks, um, but I'm already familiar with those formulas. So the one that I'm not familiar with is the one that I wanted actually try on in front of you guys. Um, so let's just quickly talk about the ones I tried yesterday. So first up are these new Mega Glow blush sticks. So this is not a new formula. They already have other blush sticks like the one in the shade Peach Bums, which is kind of a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Pinkasm blush. Um, there's that one. They also have highlighters that come in this packaging and bronzer sticks as well. So these are two new shades of the blush. So here we have Dusty Pink, which has more of a glow to it and Current Jam, which is more of a satin finish. It's not a completely matte shade, but it's not quite as glowy as the other one. And these are both beautiful kind of pink berry colors. And to be honest with you, when I see these swatched, they look like almost the same color. It's just one is a little bit more glowy than the other. So I sort of wish they had done slightly more contrasting shades, but I suppose if you like this kind of color and you don't want the glow, you could go for the other one. And if you do want the glow, I mean, I guess there's options for both. So anyway, I applied the dusty pink one first and this one, like it is definitely very glowy. This is the type of blush where you put it on and it basically basically just looks like you're wearing a blush highlighter hybrid. The formula on these is really nice. They're not sticky and they dry immediately to a powder. So I don't feel like they lift up my foundation underneath and they blend really well. Like I said before, I've used this formula for years and I'm really familiar with it. I don't think it's like a super, super long wearing formula, but I can definitely get most of a day's wear out of it. And then the other shade is Current Jam. And this one, like I said, it's not a complete flat matte. I felt like I still saw some glow on this cheek also. And I don't know if that's because I have the slightly glowy foundation underneath besides. But yeah, once I applied this and I looked like back and forth between the two cheeks, I really feel like these look so similar. <laughs> so I think, you know, if you like this color, if you just want a little bit more glow, get the dusty pink one. If you want a little bit less glow, get Current Jam but otherwise I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference between the two. Still, I do think it's a really nice formula. And then Wet n Wild also sent me uh, their powder blushes and they have two new shades, which I thought was really exciting, Bed of Roses and Naked Brown. So they also sent me um, their three regular shades as well that they've had for a while. So I'm a really big fan of these blushes. I think the formula is fantastic. They're so affordable. They're under $5, I believe. And the texture is just so finely milled. They just glide across your cheeks like butter. They're so soft, so silky. In the swatches here, the two all the way to the left, which are Pinch Me Pink and Pearlescent Pink, have little tiny glitter particles in them. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. You are gonna see a little bit of glitter kind of floating on your cheeks. It's not super heavy. They're they're mostly a matte formula, but just with those little flecks kind of throughout the powder. And then we have Mellow Wine, which is a matte. And then the two new ones, Bed of Roses and Naked Brown, which are also 
matte with no glitter. And really all of these, except for Pinch Me Pink, are more warm and peachy. And I feel like Pearlescent Pink and Bed of Roses look incredibly similar to each other. The only difference is like the little glitters in the Pearlescent Pink. And I also think that Mellow Wine and Naked Brown, the new one, also look incredibly similar. Mellow Wine just has a slight bit more peachiness in it while Naked Brown is a little bit browner. But otherwise, again, I'm a little bit disappointed that they're kind of sticking with a very similar color theme and not coming out with drastically different shades. So that was definitely a little bit disappointing. But just quickly, I wanna show you what these all look like on my cheeks. And I think you'll see that there's a lot of overlap and a lot of like very similar shades that look almost identical once I actually put these on. I think the biggest difference for me is Pinch Me Pink is that really cool tone pink and that one stands out from the others for sure. But the rest of the colors definitely have that very warm undertone. You have the peachiness and those nudie brown kind of colors. So yes, it is a beautiful formula, but I think they could work on expanding the color range a little bit and just making some different undertones and maybe some cooler shades, some deeper shades. These are all kind of very similar to each other. They're all like a mid-tone blush. So those are just my quick thoughts on these, but I, I have to say, they're very long lasting for a powder blush. When I went to bed last night, the last one I tried on was Naked Brown. I had it on both my cheeks and it was still there, going strong, it looked amazing. So I think this is a really, really good formula, again, for under five bucks at the drugstore. If you're looking for a long lasting powder blush that's super easy to apply, I think you can't go wrong with these. So that brings me to the third and final blush, and these I'm really excited for. These are called the Mega Glow Lip and Cheek Color. And these remind me a lot of like the new e.l.f. blushes that just came out recently. Liquid blushes are having a moment. I think all of the drugstore brands now are trying to dupe the rare beauty ones that have been out for a while. And I have to say, I think e.l.f. did a really good job with theirs. I like those. So I'm hoping that these are good as well. Like I said, I haven't tried them. So, so let's check these out quickly. I got three shades. That's all that I saw in store. So I'm pretty sure this is the entire range but I'm not 100% on that. And we have Rosy Romance, which is a beautiful kind of warmer tone pink. We have Coral Dream, which is a really beautiful peachy pink. And then we have Berry True, which is the deepest of the three. And I think if used very sparingly on my skin tone, this will create that just came in from the cold sort of vibe. So all three of these colors look promising. I like that they're all very different from each other. So we'll really hopefully be able to see some variation between them on my skin. In. Let's start with Rosy Romance. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm gonna try applying this with a brush. This is a BK Beauty 112 brush. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit and maybe I'll try the other one with a sponge over there and see how that's different. But oh my gosh, look at the pigment on these. I just picked up a tiny little bit and it's already very pigmented and it's also drying down very fast. So you have to work extremely quickly with these. Just do one cheek at a time. <laughs> Don't like put it here, put it here, and then go back. I would say just put the dot and start working on it immediately. But I do think it's blending out nicely. It's drying down, like I said, almost right away. And I do think this color is really pretty. I'm just gonna build up a little bit more. Yeah, this is really pretty. I like this color a lot. I like the formula so far. It looks very smooth. It doesn't look patchy like um, the Flower Beauty ones that I tried a couple of weeks ago. I was really disappointed in how those looked. I feel like this one definitely looks a lot smoother than those. So let's try out the other two colors. So I'm gonna try the shade Coral Dream over on my other cheek. And I wanna try applying this one with a sponge and just see if there's any difference. So yeah, this one is also very pigmented. A little bit definitely goes a very long way with this one. Just work very quickly. I do think that the sponge is shearing it out a little bit more than it was on the other side. So I think if you want more pigment, definitely use the brush. So yeah, that's the sponge versus the brush. I actually think I like the brush side better. I think it looks smoother. The sponge over here, I think because you're kind of doing this like patting motion. I think it might just be kind of lifting up the product each time and like absorbing it back into the sponge. But one thing that I did just forget about too is I have the primer over here under the foundation, which could also be why this side looks a lot smoother than this side because it already did look smoother over here. So zoomed way in, you can see how this side just kind of almost looks airbrushed. It's really, really smooth and soft. 
And then over here, you can see more texture. And I wouldn't say it looks necessarily patchy, but it just doesn't look as smooth. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just remove the product on this side. I'm gonna reapply the foundation, and then I'll apply this deeper shade just with the brush. And that way we'll be able to tell, is it the brush or is it the primer that's making this side look better? Okay, so I just added the foundation back on. I'm gonna go in with this darker shade, which again is called Berry True. And I'm gonna be using the brush this time. Just picking up the tiniest little bit. And oh my gosh, I'm kind of afraid of this color. It looks really dark. All right, let me just wipe off the brush. Okay, I'm just gonna start blending this. Again, I have to work really quickly, but like I said before, this is that kind of color that's gonna look so beautiful, like that fresh in from the cold sort of look. And I think even if you have fair skin, you can make this work. You just have to go very sparingly with it. Okay, so looking at my skin in the mirror, I think this side does still look a little bit smoother than this side, but this side doesn't look quite as bad as it did with the sponge. So I think it's partly the primer over here and also partly the brush application that makes these blushes look smooth. This side definitely looks better with this color than it did with the coral one, I think. Next up, moving on to lip products, we have these new Rich Satin Lipsticks. So these come in, I believe, six shades. I got three of them to try, and these are like $2 or $2.29 or something crazy. So they're really, really affordable. I really like the updated packaging that these come in. They have the Wet n Wild logo actually stamped into the tube instead of just printed on. And I just think it adds a really nice more elevated touch to the packaging. And these have an incredibly creamy feel. They're really nice, very, very smooth. Um, they do have a scent that's kind of a mix of vanilla and like a waxy smell, almost like a crayon. So it's not my favorite scent to be honest with you, but it's not horrible. And I'll just quickly show you what all three of these colors look like. The first one, Disco Rose, has a little bit of frostiness to it. So it kind of reminds me of the lipsticks from the 80s that have that more metallic finish. And I don't like these only because I feel like they draw attention to my lip lines just a little bit. Then the next one is Hush Lil Beige. I really love this color a lot. I'm not necessarily with what I had on at the time, but I think this is a gorgeous rosy brown shade. And this one has a cream finish, so there's no shimmer to this one at all. I think it's beautiful. And then the last one is One in a Millie Melon. And this one is kind of in between the two. It doesn't have quite as frosty of an appearance as Disco Pink, but it's just a little tiny bit shinier than Hush Little Beige. So this one also I think is a beautiful color. I think it really like wakes up my face. I like the shade a lot on me. And like I said, these lipsticks feel very creamy on my lips. They didn't feel drying at all. I didn't get the longest wear time out of them. They do transfer because they're not something that dries down completely matte. They have that little bit of creaminess to them, but I did feel like I got a decent amount of wear out of them, a few hours. So anyway, for today's wear test, I wanted to try one of these, which are the cheek colors because they're also a lip color and I wanna see how long these last. So I think I'm gonna wear this shade, which is Rosy Romance, but before I do that, I'm just gonna line my lips with the Wet n Wild Lip Liner. This is their gel lip liner and it's in the shade Comes Naturally. This is a beautiful pink. I think it's gonna go really well with the Rosy Romance shade. And these are some of the creamiest lip liners I have ever felt hands down. They just glide across your skin really easily. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line my lips with this. It's effortless, like I hardly even have to press down at all. Then I think just to avoid putting this directly on my lips with the wand, I'm just gonna put a little on the back of my hand and I'm gonna just pat it on with my finger that way. I do have a little bit of lip balm on underneath and that way hopefully this won't feel too drying. But like I said, with my cheeks, they do dry down to a powder finish almost immediately. So I think without something on your lips first, this would feel really, really drying. So anyway, guys, here is the finished look. So I'm just gonna go about the rest of my day. I'll do a midday check-in. I'll go outside and we'll see what this looks like in natural lighting as well. And then one final check-in in the evening time before I go to bed. So I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, it's about 8 p.m. So I'm back with my final thoughts and I have some mixed feelings on the new Wet n Wild stuff. There were things that I really liked and other things that I didn't like so much. So let's start, I guess, with just the positive. 
I like the blush sticks. I like this formula a lot. I still think they could have maybe made these look a little bit more different from each other, but otherwise I think this is a great formula. I had a feeling I was gonna like these just because I like the other ones that they have out. Same thing with the powder blushes. I've loved this formula for a long time. I wish that the new shades weren't quite as similar to the old shades as they are, but otherwise I think this is a great formula, super easy to apply, really long lasting. I also really like these new blushes. As you can see, they're still holding strong. I have the Rosy Romance over here and the, what is this one? Berry True, the dark one on this side. And they still look freshly applied, which I'm really happy about. I also had put Rosy Romance on my lips and I still see a little bit of it even hours and hours later. Um, and it doesn't look patchy, which I'm really happy about. The only thing I would say is that I think it makes my lips look a little bit more lined, but that's just because I have a lot of lines in my lips anyway and usually the only thing that I can wear that would really smooth those out is either a lip oil or a gloss. Everything else eventually is going to make those lines look a little more apparent so it's not really the fault of this product. I will say it doesn't feel drying on my lips especially on top of a lip balm so overall I like these. I think I'll just mainly use them for cheeks but I think they're really good. I also do like these satin lipsticks. Not crazy about the crayon-like scent that they have, but otherwise, I think they're really smooth. They look great on the lips. They're super pigmented, like in one swipe, and I love how creamy they feel. The only thing I'm not crazy about was that one shade, um, Disco Pink, which is a little bit too frosty for me, but the other two shades that I got that have more of the creamy finish, I really like. So I do like these, and one thing that really surprised me that I was not expecting to like because I don't like the original version is the impossible primer stick. The original like one that's in the tube, I just didn't feel like it did anything for me. I didn't feel like it smoothed my pores as well as I was hoping it would. Um, I didn't feel like it made my foundation last any longer. This one truly has a smoothing effect, which you'll see when I do my foundation check-ins. I mean, it kept this side of my face looking so much smoother than this side. And I also feel like it has kind of like a grippy quality that helps the foundation to really stick to my skin. So I'm gonna keep playing with this one with other foundations for sure, but at least today I'm loving this side of my face so much more than this side. And I think it's all due to this primer. So this is really nice. Now there were a couple of pretty big fails. The first one being the So Defined Mascara. So again, this might just be my experience with it. Uh, for other people, it might last longer. But again, I'm seeing the darkness under my eyes here where it's starting to smudge. I showed you last night it did the exact same thing. It may be my eye shape. It might be the skincare that I have on underneath. Whatever it is, this smudge is like crazy and it's supposed to have like a 24 hour hold time. Not to mention it claims to be clump free and I felt like it was kind of more of a clump experience when I was putting this on. Also, um, this Hydra Deep Puffer, I don't feel like it really did anything for me. Now, it, I'm not saying it doesn't because if you have puffiness under your eyes, it may definitely take care of that. I felt like it felt really nice going on, but I didn't really see a big difference. So the only reason that I would use this is just because it kind of makes me feel like more awake as I'm putting this on. It has that really cold sensation, but I don't know that it really does anything visibly for me. Um, then the eyeshadow crayons, I'm sad to say that even over a powder, it still creased really badly. Um, so you can see like the moon shape there right in my crease where it's just kind of settling in. So I'm disappointed. Um, but like I said before, when I was applying this today, I could feel kind of how sticky it was and I didn't really notice yesterday as much, but it just doesn't have the longevity that I was hoping for. And then when it comes to the skin tint, uh, this one, is kind of a letdown for me. Maybe I'm just not a skin tint person. I, I feel like, you know, it's definitely more hydrating than the L'Oreal and the Maybelline ones, but I'm just not really loving the way that this looks on my skin. So let me just show you quickly the check-in from earlier in the day. This is an outdoor natural lighting. I was in my car and looking at my forehead, I think the one side that has the primer looks pretty good but the side without the primer, you can see my forehead lines so much more. So this definitely has a tendency to settle into those lines. 
And then on my cheeks, same thing. I feel like the side with the primer looked pretty decent. It didn't look 100% smooth because I think this does have a little bit of glowiness to it. So it, it does slightly enhance texture. But then on the other side, without the primer, I noticed my texture a lot more. And I also felt like the coverage wasn't as good either. The primer really seemed to grip the product to my skin. And I think on the side without the primer, it just started wearing away faster. So both sides looked the same when I first applied it, but now hours later, the side without the primer is just looking like the coverage isn't there. And then on my chin, I felt like both sides, whether I had primer or not, it looks a little bit kind of uh, makeup-y. It looks like it's clinging to the dry skin a little bit. It, it almost gives that sort of fuzzy appearance. I just am not a fan of the way that this looks on my chin at all. But let me just zoom you guys in and we'll take a quick look at what it's looking like right now. Okay, so again, on my forehead, I feel like, you know, this side looks a little bit better than this side over here. I think if I didn't have these fine lines, it would look a little bit smoother in this area. Then um, down here, again, this cheek definitely looks a bit smoother than this cheek over here. And I think the coverage looks better. It just looks more even on this side than over here. My chin is definitely the trouble spot. It's just not looking good there at all. So overall, I'm just not a big fan of the skin tint either. So, I mean, I think I liked more things than I didn't, but it's a very hit or miss sort of a video. So I'd love to hear your take on all of these products down in the comment section. Are you planning on picking anything up or trying anything? Um, what are you planning to skip? If anything, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I just wanna take a quick second to thank you all for clicking on this video, for watching. I really, truly appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button. If you have some extra time, I'll just put something right up here for you to check out next. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next one. Take care guys. Bye.